And uh, I think if I was a teacher, mm. right, I think about this actually quite a lot mm. because maybe at the moment, because I'm, I'm filling out applications for Sunny's school, yep. so I'm thinking about like, oh, what kind of school is he going to? Someone said to me on these application forms, here's the one thing we do at this school heaps, but mm. don't tell the kids. We give them the old fake test. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So remember that story? There's a story <laughs> going around at our yeah. school when I was in about year seven or eight. And it was like, oh, you know, the teacher gave this impossible test, like 500 questions. And at the start, it said, you know, here's, you've got 10 minutes reading time. Make sure you read all the questions thoroughly and then, you know, allocate your time yes. to, to do it. And at the end, it said to get 100% on this test, just write your name. Yep. And that's the real test. Yes. Like the real test is, do you read the questions yes. all, all the way Did through? Did you read all the way through? And I was dying for one of those to happen at school. Mm. Like I was always fantasizing was at school. To, like, I was flipping to the back and going, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> but just I mean, in any context, yeah. a teacher tricking you and turning around going, and that's the real test. <laughs> so if I was a teacher, it would always be like, guys, today for you know maths, yeah. we're actually just going to try and run 50 laps of the school. Mm. And then... I mean, I haven't thought this example. <laughs> <laughs> and then if the kids are like, no, be like, that's the real test, standing up to authority. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, everybody, hey, she's example. not a teacher. <laughs> and be, I would love my dad <laughs> to be listening to this. He's been a teacher for 40 years. <laughs> um, but well, I, I, get do, you, I get I do you, a get, real test that's more relevant to math. I get, you, I get your drift. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's, Putting out something, but you're secretly testing something else. Double layer that, tests. That, that to me, it sounds like a great plan. I mean, I would just like to know in 13, 10, 60, mm. have you been, and maybe I use this as a way to look for schools for Sunny. Yeah. Did you have teachers that pulled this like double layer test on you? Yep. Where they turned around and went, guess what? That's the real test. Just to see if you would help out a mate. Doesn't yeah. matter what the test was about or whatever it is. Tests within tests. 13, 10, 60. If it's, it's, a tough brief, it, it's, but... uh, it's a tough brief, but if a principal went, that's all we do, yeah. I go, yeah, great. Here's my, here's my <laughs> deposit. <laughs> hey, Mission Andy. Okay. <laughs> Driving you home. Now, right. I, now I want to say something up front. Yep. I know we in that song we just all said, well, why don't we think of tests that... We would give kids if we were high school teachers. So basically laying out something... A test within a test. The yeah. example that everyone heard, certainly when I was at high school, was, mm. oh, there's this really long test everyone got. The last... At the start, it just says, read all the questions before you begin. Yep. At the last one, it says to get 100%, just write your name and nothing else. Mm. And then the whole point is like, that's the real test. Yep. Did you read all the questions? So... I always fantasized at school and I would love if I was a teacher to have a moment where I could turn to the kids and go, that's the real test, yep. right? So then in the song, and I gave a bad example before about, I said, if I was a math teacher, you know, tell the kids to run 50 laps. And if they said no, that would be me <laughs> testing them to question authority. But I think they'd say no anyway. <laughs> that's not a great test. So we all had to think about a Well, you test. said everyone try and think of one. <laughs> now, I think we've got time to quickly go through them. Yep. You want to go first? Jack, you had to think of one. Mine's inspired by the example you gave where at the end it says, read all the questions. So for a media teacher, um, she gives t DVDs of the movie you have to watch and analyze and later do a test on. Yep. At the end of the film, she dubs herself into the DVD. Oh, you've just done the exact same. <laughs> like, you've just stolen the, the written one. Turn your mic off. Inspired by. I direct. said, don't come to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jack, okay. Jack did stay tame. Guys, only come to me if you got nothing. <laughs> That's why I wanted to start with Jack. So now ours will look all right, Anna. Yeah. So mine is, yeah. I'm the science teacher. Mm. The whole year, I go to the kids... All right, guys, that's it for today's lesson. Remember, keep your eyes open. Science is all around you. Okay. Sort of my catchphrase. Yep. Kids like, that's weird. Mr. Blake, he's always saying that. Yeah. Then at the end of the end of year exam, it comes and it's like impossible. It's like university level. Yeah. But written above me, on the above the blackboard, <laughs> right, no. is a four digit code that's never been there all year and it's written in paint on the wall. There's a small box up the front of the classroom with a padlock on it, and the code is the code to the box. And for the smart kids, they'll go, hang on a sec, I think that code opens Mate, that box, and inside are all the answers. Keep your eyes open, guys. <laughs> science is all around you. No, it's not science all around you. It's a cryptic clue for an escape room. Legend. Might be a Legend. <laughs> Mr. Blake. <laughs> Mr. Blake's an idiot. <laughs> All right. I mean, mine's not much better, so I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed I went after you two so hard. My idea was um, on an excursion, right? <laughs> so 
we're taking all the kids and we've got to go to an area where you're going across as, as like a bridge or something at a gate at the end. So we'll, okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay, okay. Everyone bring their permission slips no, to the and bridge. I'm getting my keys out to open the gate and mm. I drop them. I'm like, okay. oh no. And we have to go about how can we get like used our surrounds to try and retrieve the key. The Keep keys. your eyes open. Kids science is all <laughs> no. around you. And so, you know, we're getting sticks and we've got some wire. And we're, we're, we're all working together to retrieve the keys. We pull it up and we, and there's, we go through the gate. I go, that was the test. Could we work together to get the keys? Oh, that's just bad. I thought the gate wasn't locked. Might've been the test. <laughs> no, no. Pretty it bad. Was, no. <laughs> well, just, that's just a camp activity. <laughs> That's well, just like, let's build, it let's build a let's under the guise of the excitement oh, of real life. Let's real help. life. Well, geez, yeah, this teach. is bad. Well, you know, this is a great story. Jeez, well, thank God we got people calling in because Kate. <laughs> Your um, teacher does this, Kate. You, 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 oh, you I'm, are a teacher, oh, Kate. I am a teacher. All right, you Kate, do this. first of all, did you like any of our ideas? Um, yeah, I actually like the one with the lock and the, key, yes. the code for Mr. science. Mr. Blake. Really, Kate? <laughs> Yes. Thanks, Kate. You can use that one free of copyright. Um, uh, I will. Now, what, but what's the, what's the test that you give kids where you're like, that was the real <laughs> test? Um, we give a, the year seven because they invariably, the reason why they don't do well in tests is because they don't actually read the instructions or the questions. Yep. So we give them a test that has a whole heap of things and they're told they've got reading time, they have to read through it all and then they can start. And invariably they start and the first, the first question is stand up and run around your chair, sit down, scream your name, blah, 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 turn around, talk to somebody. And the last thing is only write your name on the top right hand oh. corner. Oh, right. Yeah. That's the test. <laughs> that's, yeah. the, that's the famous that's test. The test. So Kate, then, are people yeah. start, do people start standing up and running around their chairs? Yeah. yeah. And then we get one or two who actually sit there and read through it. And then they just, they just kind of sit there and do nothing that's a real test. Um, and wait. And we'd come and check that they're done and then they can like, yeah, go into a different room and watch a movie while they're the, the others kids. are making idiots of themselves. They're the kids that would notice the code above the blackboard. <laughs> <laughs> Brent. Okay. Brent. So, so that's the real test. The real test is if people are up and running around their they're failing. Their chair, they're failing. Haven't read all the way to the end. Yeah. Brent, you had a teacher who gave you a double layer test? Yeah, so um Ahoy boys. Ahoy, Ahoy, yeah, Ahoy thank you. Thank you. What um what he did was he gave us a twenty five question multiple choice um maths test. Yep. All of the questions were really, really easy. But he made every single answer B. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would freak you out. <laughs> yeah. So what 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 you what he wanted to do was to see whether or not we were willing to back our intelligence, and because we knew the answers were right, or whether we would be stupid enough to change one of them, thinking that there's no way every answer could possibly. <laughs> That's yeah, a good that's test. A great that test. is a great test. Hey, Brent, you're not the mix master, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> we, we thought we might have the mix master. On. <laughs> we, um, sorry, that's a very old reference for old school uh, <laughs> reference for hardcore fans. Aaron, really quickly, just because I love this topic, uh, Aaron. Yeah. You um you had a double layer test. Uh, my mate's father was a professor or lecturer at Monash Uni, and he told all his students one evening the evening before their test that they must watch the Simpsons episode the night before. Chill out. You're not going to learn anymore. And then he put three questions from that episode onto their final year test. Jeez, really? How much and would the three questions be worth? Oh, I don't. I can't imagine that they would be allowed to be worth much. But really, forty percent. Jeez, that's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Oh, did you hear that, guys? Forty percent. Forty percent of the wow, test was the that's so, I wonder. I wouldn't have thought it could be that high. If your teacher told you to go watch this, I mean, it's a little bit rough because, <laughs> like, you can. Not, I'm just testing how obedient you are. Now. Yeah, because you could still take his advice and do something leisurely, <laughs> which it's doesn't. Good. Good. It's a bit like bring me a cake and you'll, I'll give you an extra ten percent. Aim. You're still fiercely defending your test. <laughs> Look, if you just, just tuned in. If you've just tuned in, we're talking about if you're a high school teacher giving kids a double layer test. Yes. A test within a test, something where you can turn around and go, that's the real test, guys. Yes. And yours was and everyone goes, at well the done. end of what, year eight science, was it? Yeah, let's say year eight or nine. Year eight is like science. I've you're the science saying, teacher. I've been saying all year to the kids, remember kids. Science is all around you. I like, don't have your nose stuck in books. Doesn't work. Look for real life examples. Science is everywhere. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, you, what would you know, teach? Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm, I'll do what I want. Yeah. All right. Just, just telling you, science is all around you. End of your exam comes. <laughs> it's impossible. I give them a university level science exam. Yeah. Um, no one can answer anything. Uh, even it's multiple choice. Yeah. 
above my, me on the above the whiteboard in the classroom, I've painted for those observant enough to realize science is all around them. A four-digit code. But that's on not the science. It's, not, it's a clue. It's numbers. not science. It's all around. <laughs> numbers. It's science. Math, then math is all around. Did you, should you do this in math? No, this is science. Okay. This is kind of half psychology, a so little bit of physics. So then, so if someone, so then the kid goes, "What's that?" No, hang on a sec. Then they notice that there's a box, yeah. a locked box, sort of on my desk. Not very obvious. Yep. And they go, "That looks like a, that's a, that's got a four-digit lock on the box. Mm. There's a four-digit code above the yeah. above the whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on here." Smart kid goes up, opens the box, and inside is the answers. Now, he can choose to share that with his classmates. I would recommend against it because I'll be marking on the curve. And, so, okay, a couple of things. At my school, you weren't allowed to just get up and wander around the class. <laughs> Another during... one of my catchphrases is, <laughs> roam free, my children. <laughs> because then people can I cheat. encourage a very kind of <laughs> loose, You can just free walk range, past free the smart range kids and look for answers anytime you like. You guys have, have anyway, been picking apart this I, idea. Jack just goes, what if the kid that gets it is the dumbest kid all year? Yeah. Well, no, because he's the smartest kid because he's, no, he's, 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 he he's knows not. to look for codes. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and He's always you're looking saying for clues. That, so the whole class fails except for Aaron. I guess like, it would be a pretty harsh lesson, but <laughs> one that they could learn at year eight level. So you, you're so, not going to have a great year eight science class. Thing, I know I might get some grumpy the parents. Other, also, the lesson's not great because Keep your Aaron, eyes open. Aaron, for the rest of his life, if he then starts a job... And is presented with a problem. You know, he's now working, if it's still in science, yeah. he's now working and obviously say a virus breaks out and is presented with a problem. Here we go, Instead guys, of actually wait, wait, trying wait, wait, to wait. solve it, he's just looking around for a code. And we need thinkers like that. We need the Hail Mary. We need the guys that believe in miracles. <laughs> That's the real test. That's what I'm testing for. <laughs> but in, here, actually, we can't, we can't take any more calls on this. What I'd love overnight. Yep. I think what we've learned is designing... Double layer tests for students is hard. Is it hard? If you think Hamish you're a better one. Com, if like extra points if you're not a teacher. Yeah. If you can send us in one, yep. we'll read a few out in tomorrow's show. <laughs> Gosh, this made us laugh yesterday, and Look, it's continuing to bear some <laughs> real beauties on email. HamishNeddy.com. Took up a lot of the show uh, towards the end of the show yesterday, but um, essentially tests within a test. Mm. Talking about the fact that at school, wouldn't it be great uh, if you're a teacher to get the opportunity to do that thing where you go, Hey, you guys have all uh, done the test? Well, guess what? It was just about how fast you handed in. That was the real test <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Not the best example, but double layer tests. Yeah. Being, the chance to go, that was the real test. The good example you used yesterday was the, uh, the exam where it says, make sure you read all the questions thoroughly before yeah. starting. And the last question was, just, don't, write your name. just write your name. Don't you get do 100%. Anything. That's the real test. Yes. Had some amazing ones come in overnight. Actual right? ones? Yeah. Can I give you a quick one here? Yeah. I know we're going to go to a song, but podcaster from the US here, said, when I was in primary school, we had a typing test in computer class. We were instructed to type out exactly what was on a printed page and not ask any questions, Mm -hmm. right? On the page, the teacher had misspelled George Washington's name. And if we changed it, we failed the test because the instructions (laughs) were to print exactly exactly what's written, which I think is actually a reverse (laughs) message for kids because it's sort of going, be a robot, (laughs) have no thought. (laughs) For yourself, but even when you know, but it's if you're teaching computer programming, yeah. it's saying, "Hey, hotshot, yeah. you don't understand everything that's going on here. Just write down what I told you to write down." <laughs> Straight after this, they'd have. So I, I suppose for programming, it helps. I've got another one here where I think a teacher's gone very far <laughs> with regards. I've to I've got this a lesson. university level one, which is an amazing <laughs> stitch. <laughs> Ham, we're calling them the double layered tests. We're loving them across all levels of education, whether it's normally. <laughs> High school and, and university, where they, they you think you're getting tested for something, but there's another test happening. There's the, the fun of time. turning around and going, uh, 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 that was the real test. This one is particularly peculiar that's been sent in from uh, a guy called Tav. It says, one of our teachers at our school got permission of the parents to do this. Right. <laughs> Which is always... <laughs> I feel automatically I go... That probably wouldn't be allowed to happen these days. So something tells me that this was done back in the good old days. It was designed to teach students about radicalistic behaviour. The teacher went ahead and duct taped one of the students to a chair. (laughs) That's definitely not happening these days. (laughs) And duct taped their mouth shut so they couldn't speak. Uh So they got the kid's parents' permission. Yes. What a weird letter. Yeah. (laughs) Then asked who wanted to duct tape the person a bit more. Right. (laughs) <laughs> the people that duct tape the person went on for an immediate fail. 
The people that didn't do anything also failed, but there was one person who stood up and said, I don't think this is right, and they passed. <laughs> <laughs> what about duct tape, kid? He'd pass. And we're going to we're going to chuck you a pass as well. Uh, just because I talked to your mum and dad about it, but um, thanks for playing along. Because you've been punished. Thanks because you let you... me tape you up in front of the class. Because you've been tortured. That is the second most violent thing I've heard happening to a kid in class. Yeah. Um, apart from I don't ever heard about the time when Zoe was in primary school and her dad yeah. came to do the taekwondo demonstration. <laughs> and they had like a, well, I'm sure I've told you this. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, they had like a, you know, international week. And so did things from different countries every day. And so, yeah. you know, let's say for Korea, they had like taekwondo. And Zoe's dad was a taekwondo instructor. He came into class dressed in his like martial arts outfit, yeah. did a demo on her, but ended up <laughs> kneeing her and winding her in front of the class. And it was a composite, composite year five, six class and she was in year five too. So already yeah, you're at the bottom of the pecking order. And then for the rest so he was like, didn't your dad come and near you in the guts and wind you? <laughs> Remember that day your dad came and winded you in front of the class? But um, toughened her up. Good. Um, she, she remembers it fondly. Here's another quick one. I know where we go. This is incredible. From a university level, mm-hmm. uh, this comes in from Zach. He goes, hey, took a class at uni called Lost Tribes and Sunken Continents. One class we were made to watch... <laughs> <laughs> One class we were made to watch a doco on the Mayan people of Mexico. Yep. Then the next day we're given an exam about the documentary. The next class, the teacher said, you've all failed the exam. The documentary was fake. The people in the film purporting to be professors and historians were just actors, but you believe what they were saying because they had fancy titles behind their names on the screen. You should have been thinking critically and not blindly accepting what you were presented in the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Which raises so many questions such as who's producing fake documentaries for universities to use to trick their students? I'm picturing... Hey, show this to your class. They'll buy it. We've put heaps of work into it. It looks totally believable. So they're all I'm... going, yeah, Mayans had and... cars and they were driving around, they had phones. How fake did the professors look in the thing? I mean, if they had fake moustaches on all... No, maybe... I mean, maybe, but I guess it was just... She was like, what are you meant to do? You're the teacher. You showed us a documentary. Yeah. Then you quizzed us on it and then failed everyone. And went, made up doco. Keep them coming in, though. Hamishetty.com, the double laid test. These are, these are going to be some of our favourite things we've ever we've ever found on the show. You and I love this, Sam, because essentially we like tricks. And love points. tricks. And this is what we would do if we were teachers. We were yeah. talking the other day about if you were uh, like a teacher, how cool it would be to do one of those tests where everyone sort of thinks they've done the test then you reveal to them it was actually a test about something else, and that was the real test. The example we gave was the question, the form you, like I heard about this a lot at high school, you know, 500 questions on a test or whatever. The last question just says, just write your name on this exam, nothing else, and you'll get 100%. And at the start it says read all the questions carefully. Before you start. Before you begin. So that that idea of just tricking kids into getting 100% is awesome. We've had so many people email in either real ones or ones that people would do. Hi- people have been designing hypothetical double layer tests, but can I start with a real one? Let's do. Ahead? Let's concentrate on real one Listen now. This, this is a come, cracker. Come in from overseas from our podcast as well. Hamishnelly.com. Keep them coming in because we're fascinated with them. I think this is primary Keep school. Yep. This is from Lee. She goes, I'm a teacher and I've got a classic double layer test I give the kids. It's a giant where's Wally, like mm-hmm. a big kind of bigger than A3 kind of thing. Um, so everyone goes over, she says, I put it on the table on one side of the room. Everyone goes over and quietly has to find Wally. Mm -hmm. When you found Wally, you go and stand on the other side of the classroom. The thing is, there's no Wally in the picture. So after a while, kids start getting nervous. They haven't found Wally. So to not look dumb, slowly they all start moving (laughs) to the other side of the room. She said, usually everyone's on the other side of the room, except a couple of kids. Then I tell them there is no Wally in it. Lesson, don't pretend to know something or to have the answer. <laughs> what a great double A Great test. one, great one. Okay, this one came in from Tad. And he had a philosophy teacher, him, who said at the start of the year that only one person will receive an A at the end. Wow. And he said it's going to be based on the final exam, that only one person will receive an A. They've been studying courage throughout they had two hours to complete the final exam, and it consisted of one question. What is courage to you? One student only, just after two minutes, turned his paper over and walked out, got the A, which is <sighs> courage is turning this exam in with one sentence is all it was written, and then walked out. <laughs> I mean, uh, sorry, the, the, the student wrote that. Yeah, Stuart, Stuart. Did he get the A? Yeah, he got the A. But I mean... 
Gee, ballsy, because the teacher doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's that's like a double layer test, and the teacher doesn't know what the second layer is. Like one one kid could stand up and go, "I'll I'll I'll stab myself in the hand for an A." I mean, that's not <laughs> courage. Just <laughs> stupidity. But there you go. That was the double layer test. One person got the A. Pretty good. I mean, <laughs> I like a good it. lateral test. This one is so insane. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I believe it. Okay. But it. I mean, it checks out. This is from Courtney. She goes, when I was in year five, my teacher told us he was going down to the printer for a few minutes and for us to continue with our work. (laughs) Two minutes later, a man burst into the classroom yelling with a bandana around his face and a fake knife in his hand. The whole class screamed while the man made one of the boys direct him to where the uh, money was hidden in the classroom whilst holding the boy at fake knife point. A few minutes into the ordeal, we realised it was our teacher dressed up (laughs) and he then told us to write a newspaper article on what (laughs) happened. <laughs> so many questions. <laughs> if that's true, if that's true, write a newspaper article. Right? Okay, yeah, okay. I'll write it from the perspective of a journalist who cannot believe they were involved in the in the attack. Yeah, that's not a newspaper article about something that happens to other people. This is an eyewitness account of a terrifying ordeal. Yeah. I might write it from the perspective of a newspaper reporter who's going to say that there's a teacher that shouldn't be teaching yeah. anymore because he's harassing kids. Assault scandal rocks school. <laughs> <laughs> there's my headline. <laughs> Ham, we're talking about double-layered tests. Never before have we received, received so much top-quality correspondence yep. for a topic. I mean, this really took a couple of days, but it opened the floodgates. The concept of teachers saying the test for one thing and t- actually testing you on something else, whether it's bravery or, mm. um, you know, don't pretend you've got the answer, as we had before. We've gone through actual ones that have happened in schools, and then people started writing in mm. with their hypothetical ones if they were teachers. Can I kick it off? Yeah, you can. Because this all really started with us trying to invent our own double mm. layer test. What do you got? Pat writes in. And look, I, I, I feel like there's a few holes in this one, but I'm going <laughs> to yeah, yeah. just... He said, the real test, he goes... Tell one student to rearrange my desk as, yeah, okay. I, as I head out of the classroom to speak to another teacher. And when I come back in, I say, this is unacceptable. Who did this? <laughs> right. Right. He said, no one steps forward is what he's p- predicting, right? He tells the kids... Well, wouldn't they, yeah, that sorry, he, wouldn't they just go, Matt did it? Well, well <laughs> in, his, in his hypothetical, he, say, he says, no one's stepping yep. forward. He said, well, tell the kids that I'd like to know. And there might be a reward if someone comes forward. Oh, is he maybe quietly saying to this kid, hey, rearrange my desk while I'm out? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Do you reckon he's saying on the slide? Yeah, Oh, so he's not saying in front of the class. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, right. So So he's saying on the slide. Sorry. He secretly said to a student, let's call him Matt. Yeah. Hey, when I'm out of the classroom, rearrange my desk. desk. Don't tell the others. Yeah, got right. (laughs) Okay, good. He comes back in and says, this is unacceptable. Who did this? (laughs) And no one steps forward. Then he says, there might be a reward if someone comes forward and tells me. Here we go. Right. He said, I remind the kids for a week, and then at the end of the week, I say it was a setup. I asked Matt to rearrange my desk. The real test is about dubbing. Remember, if it doesn't affect you, don't dub on people. Snitches get stitches. <laughs> well, I don't think that's a good lesson. I don't think teachers should be. No. Don't they rely on dubbing? I think. They rely on the I informant think network. We all rely on that. We rely on eyewitnesses for any crime for society. It's not, it's not a valuable skill. No. Well, I mean, then look, he... dobbing's a tough issue because there's probably times where you should and shouldn't, but and, and teaching says, kids to go. <laughs> Don't do it. Then he says, I also would turn to Matt and said, you should have owned up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good one. A good one. We'll pay it. No, it's um, not a good one. Oh, no, look, a bad I mean, one. It, it's a good one in the sense that it spices up the school year, <laughs> which I think is half the payoff for a lot of these tests. Okay. This comes in from Lucas, and he raises a great point. He goes, guys, listen to the show today about uh, double-layered tests. Surprised you boys didn't bring up the Slugworth, mm-hmm. which, of yeah. course, is from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Slugworth goes, hey, give me your golden ticket or, you know, steal the gobstopper yeah. and I'll give you 10 grand, which to Charlie's like two bill. Yeah. Charlie doesn't steal the gobstopper. Out comes Slugworth at the end of the film and goes, I'm not Slugworth. That was a test. Yes. You now inherit the Chocolate Factory. Spoiler alert, film did come out in the 80s. So <laughs> I can't think earlier, mate. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, hard, shame on you for not seeing it. Yep. So he goes, okay. So first with my year eights, I'd line them up. Um, I'd say, guys, he's got a catchphrase like me. He goes, my line would be that we live in the 21st century and we need to be up to date and fresh. Yesterday is old. Today is new. I'd get them to sign a contract saying that they would endeavor to stay fresh. Okay. 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 <laughs> then I'd enlist my year nine students to be my slugworths. I'd start spreading rumors like, huh. 
that Mr. Morrow, he's a great teacher, best in the school, but he's very lazy on his exams. He used the exact same questions in exams every year. He hands out the answer sheet. I can just give you the answer sheet if you want. You won't need to study. Right, so any year eight kid that takes the answer sheet yeah. and answers the multiple choice exam via the answer sheet, they get penalised because it's all wrong. Whoever resists the temptation of the fake answer sheet, yep. they pass the Slugworth, they stay fresh, and they pass the double layer test. Uh, it's okay. I'm not. Well, that... it's resisting a cheat. Yeah, I know, but you don't need to do the whole stay fresh kind of like... His lesson thing. is stay fresh. I know, but like, it's basically... I mean, the lesson is also don't cheat. Don't cheat's the lesson. I think he just wanted a catchphrase, <laughs> like science is all around you, my catchphrase. <laughs>